rather famous place, O.A. Newton Sun Company. My father worked there for 42 years. Mr. Newton sent me to college. I won the Newton Scholarship, and uh, I was born on that farm. My father worked there for 42 years, and, and I used to tag along with Mr. Newton all the time, and people used to think I was his son. He said, no, this is Bill Lord's son, but I, was, I lived on the farm, and my father worked there. My father was a hatchman. That's when the chicken business first started getting big in Delaware, and my father got a job running a hatchery. I wanted to be another Frank Purdue, but uh, uh, at times the chicken business had been real bad, and uh, one of the, one of the uh, executives at the Newton Company, Dr. John Hammond, said, Billy, you're smart enough to do something else. I'd get out of the chicken business if I were you. But my first uh, desire was veterinary medicine because I was being a farm boy, I used to see veterinarians come to the farm. I used to take sick chickens to the University of Delaware. And when I told the, the veterinarian that I was a, an interested veteran, he said, come on back here and I'll show you how we dissect these chickens. So he would do that and I liked that a lot, but believe it or not, back in 1957 when I graduated from college, there were only 17 veterinary colleges in the nation. You had to have a straight A average through college to get into veterinary school. I could go into medical school or dental school, most likely. I got into dental school. And uh, so the veterinary advisor at University of Delaware said, Bill, your grades are not high enough. He said, you have to have a straight A average for four years. And I didn't have that. Uh, my family dentist always encouraged me to be a dentist. And uh, that's why, I, and I was in a course at the University of Delaware Histology. There were eight pre-dentals and two pre-medicals. And I kind of hung out with the uh, pre-dentals and I kind of liked them and we all went to dental school together. Dr. Linford Hoke in Bridgeville, he's now deceased, but he was a nice man and uh, I was, I used to go, I started going to him when I was two or three years of age and he saw me all through college and he knew about that and he, he was from a family of professionals. He had a brother that was a physician, a brother that was a veterinarian, he was a dentist and uh, it was very encouraging. A funny story about Dr. Hoke, uh, when I came back to visit him one time when I was in University of Delaware getting ready to go to dental school, I said I'm applying to Temple, Penn, Maryland, Fairleigh Dickinson, Seton Hall. Those were the five dental schools in the nation. He says, kiddingly, but I thought I took it seriously. He said, you know if you don't go to Temple University in Philadelphia, we won't let you practice in the state. And you know, I, I, he was kidding, but yet, and that's where I went anyway. I knew I was going to college the day I went to first grade. We didn't have kindergarten back in those days. When I first went to Delaware, I didn't know that I was going to study a, a professional go that way. I just wanted to go to college and learn something. And uh, uh, when I started concentrating on professional school, I started taking a lot of courses and they, they, the advisors would say, why do you want to take histology? Why do you want to take biochemistry? Why do you want to take comparative anatomy? And I told him, I said, I, I think I want to go to various veterinary school. I just, I just loved all that stuff. I, I loved the bio, I, I didn't, chemistry was, organic chemistry and comparative uh, quantitative analysis was my thing. I could never be in a lab playing with chemicals and all that stuff, but I knew I had to take it. And, uh, but I, lo I loved bacteriology, I loved genetics, I loved uh, comparative anatomy. That was cutting up a cat and a fish and all that kind of stuff, and histology, study of tissues, all those courses, infectious diseases. In fact, we just had a lecture last night from a doctor from the BB Medical Center on infectious diseases, endocarditis, which is something we have to worry about when we extract teeth and do things with people who have heart valve problems and all. Georgetown was in such a need for dentists the little paper in Georgetown called the Sussex County, and they're always taking pictures of new things. And on the front page of the of the uh, Sussex County, and there was a new church being built, and my office was being built. And they said, "This is Dr. Lord's new dental office, and this is the Lord's building, or something like that." And I, I thought, what better advertisement could you have? And before I 
opened the front door, I had 200 patients. People had called wanting to be patients. I had a list of 200 people that wanted to be my patients. gotten better. Uh, the high-speed drills, uh, when I was in dental school, we didn't have many high-speed drills, but now high-speed drills have, have already gotten very proficient. They have fiber optic lights on them. When you put them in the mouth, there's a big bright light you can see so much. Suction has gotten better. Everything has gotten better. I wish today I was 30 years old instead of 72 because I would love to be doing implants and that kind of stuff. I don't do them but I, I wish I, I could because the, the patients I treat today are relatively poor and they can't afford implants. Did a lot of exodontia, yeah. Uh, exodontia is removal of teeth. I go to Honduras in the winter time for, with a missionary group uh, and that's all we do because we don't have electricity, we have flashlights, we, I have a beach chair for my, for my dental chair that looks like a little dental chair and uh, I've, been, I've gone down there six times so far. That's something I always wanted to do. Uh, there was something appealed to me about doing missionary work. It's kind of like giving back to society. And I happened to run into somebody one time and I said, what do you do in your retirement? He said, I go to Honduras and pull teeth. And that's how it got started. Oh yes, I think there's always a need for more. I mean, uh, 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 the big problem with downstate Delaware, to me it's a great place to live, but most of our young dental students and young dentists live in the Newcastle County area. And they're used to the big city, they're used to a little bit more culture up there, and their wives do not want to come downstate. I mean, we've tried a couple times. We had a dentist, orthodontist, that died suddenly. And I was one of the main guys in our town trying to get dentists to come down and take over his practice. But the wives didn't want anything to do with Georgetown. It, it, Georgetown is not a Wilmington. It's a, it's a small town, and uh, there's not a lot, a lot of culture going on there. And, you know, I can see their point of view. Uh, I mean, I couldn't live in Wilmington. And I, I'm a downstater. I enjoy living down here, especially at the beach. The big thing is the Delaware State Dental Society. And we have meetings up in University of Delaware. Now they're going to Riverside in Wilmington. Why? I don't know why the change is, but we go for our courses. Every month we have a big speaker come in from anywhere in the United States. I mean, they can be coming in from Alabama, California, New York, Chicago. And it's, a, it's a, a series that the University of Delaware puts on and they use their facilities. But now they're going to the Riverside in Wilmington. I get the little program every month with all the speakers and I love to look at it and see what the doctors are talking about. I mean, some stuff I don't even know what it is. And there's always a dental section from the residents that somebody's come in and talk. Nobody likes to go to the dentist, but you try to make it as pleasant as you can and use techniques where you, you know, like tell, show, and do for little people. You don't just jump in there and start drilling. You show them the drill and all this kind of stuff. I love helping people. I mean, that, that's one of the big, the big things when I go to Honduras and take out teeth. I may take out 10 or 15 tooth, teeth on a person one day, and they'll get up and thank you and all that stuff. And...